Pedro from EMP Reacts. I'm here today with Joaquin of Hammerfall to talk about Hammer of Dawn out February 25th on Napalm Records. How are you doing? Very good, I would say. You know, it's uh, uh, restrictions lifted in Sweden yesterday. So, you know, the future looks pretty bright now. Yeah, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. Y yeah, somewhere far in the, uh, in the horizon somewhere, but it's, uh, it feels pretty good. Yeah, and also, I mean, we have a new album coming out, so. I was just going to say, plus there's a new Hammerfall album in the horizon, exactly. so it, yeah. that's enough to, to brighten the spirits, one would think. Yes, yes, that's that's true. I mean, we've been sitting on this for quite some time now. Uh, we started to to, uh, to write songs already in the beginning of 2019 for this one, so we've been sitting on this for a while. That was actually going to be my first question, was when did it all start, uh, the process for you to put this record together? Um. I mean, in the in the early days, we always set off time to, you know, to 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 write new material. We said, okay, now we have eight months to write. Then we record. You go on tour, back to square one. And we, you know, we, we kept that, you know, uh, procedure for 10, 15 years. But then it was uh, Sam Didier who is doing the the artwork for us. He, he said, you know what, A B C, always be creating, and that's something that we picked up and. Especially Oscar being, you know, creative at all times. So now it's more like a, a constant process. So when I was in Los Angeles in in February 2019, doing the vocals for Dominion, he started to to work on the guitar. And yeah, you know what? I got some new stuff going here, and that was the starting point for Hammer of Dawn. Wow. So there's always a, an opportunity to to. to you know, to, to sit and compose in the tour bus. You know, he has a little studio set up in the back of the bus, or you know, we get to get a you know get a room, Oscar. Okay, you know, he goes in with his guitar <laughs> and sits there and you know and, and working. So uh, it's been a long, long process. But I think when we realized that the pandemic was far from over, that by the time it is over, we can't really go back and tour. You know, with Dominion, we need to present something new. And this was, uh, you know, late 2020, I would say. So then we started to work, you know, really hard with, you know, finalizing the tracks for the new album. How, how much over the years has the process changed when, when it comes to, to actually creating the songs and letting that creativity flow? Or has it stayed very close to home throughout the years? Yeah, I would say it's, uh, it's same, same, but different. <laughs> it's it's I mean it's it's been the same team since day one. It's it's me and Oscar, you know, writing more or less everything. And um, I would say it was was way easier in the beginning because then you had so many songs inside of you. But then after you know seven albums, eight albums, like oh shit, I'm running out of songs. You need to <laughs> kind of to to dig deeper into yourself to to find that creativity to be able to come up with something you haven't done before but I, it's, this was before but i sometimes I, I trick myself into being creative because there's one thing i hate most of everything in this world that's being alone in a small hotel room just sitting there and you know nothing to no one to talk to nothing to do you're trying to watch tv and if you're you're lucky, they speak English. If you're not lucky, it's kind of Turkish or it's a, a, a language you don't understand. So in order to to survive mentally, you need to do something. So you know, I guess you know, pen and a paper, and I start writing stuff. So I'm 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 kind of luring myself into being creative. And I did a solo album ten years ago, all you know, Swedish more singer songwriter pop folk type of, of music and that's how i wrote more or less the whole album i jumped on the train i you know went to a city far away i got into a hotel room like oh my god <sighs> sit here for three days oh my god but i came back home with you know some good songs so when you look at that process that you guys take and like you said you you sometimes you feel like you have to squeeze new songs out of you because it's a lot harder now than it was at the beginning uh, when you look at Hammer of Dawn specifically, is this album a little bit of the continuation of what we've always seen for Hammerfall? Or is there, uh, for the listener coming in that hasn't had a chance to listen to the record, are they going to identify some new elements that you guys are trying to incorporate into the DNA of Hammerfall as you move forward into the future? 
for Hammerfall has always been very, I mean, we, we, we set the frames around what is Hammerfall already day one. This is Hammerfall and this is heavy metal according to us. And within these frames, we are kind of free to do whatever we want. I mean, you can do a song, an up-tempo song like The Dragon Lies Bleeding from our debut album, for instance. But you can also do Always Will Be, a ballad, a really, really soft ballad. I mean, that is okay within the frames of heavy metal because that's how they taught us this back in the 80s. And I think with Hammerfall, we will never really you know, stray away trying to come up with something new because now we need to present a, a different side of the band like no i think it's so, enough what we have you know within the uh, what's okay for us uh, for, for on this album maybe there are some some new elements i mean there is this song reveries for instance which is has a very different type of, of chorus very contagious chorus i would say and it's kind of one of those songs you can never have unheard once you heard it you can never go back. No. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And when I was listening to the album, I felt that if there's something new in this record, maybe it's some tweaks in terms of the sound and the experience that you're getting from the record. But the DNA of Hammerfall, it's un, unhinged from the yes. beginning all the way to the end. It will, all, it will always be there. It will always be like that. I think one of the main things when it comes to, to, to me, you know, working with the vocal melodies that I... I had so much time now, so I could really put everything like a good, it's like a good wine. You put it to rest for a little while and it matures. It gets, you know, mm, and you taste it like, oh my God, this is good, but can I make it even better? Eh, and you sit there and you listen back to what you just recorded. And you know what? This melody, maybe I can tweak it just a little bit. So I went, went into micromanaging every song. <laughs> and I thought it was for the better. But when I came to the studio, I realized like, oh my God, every single song will be a, a challenge to, to, to sing. And also the producer said, oh my God, you're not making it easy on yourself, dude. It's like, no, oh, I know. But I had time now to really, you know, when I'm changing things, it always goes up. <laughs> you know, it's not like I'm going to take down the song and, you know, sing it in a lower register. No, no, no. <laughs> Take it up there at the age of 52, you know, eh, maybe for the next album I should, you know. I, I don't think so. I mean, like you said about the wine, uh, at 52, you're starting to become vintage. So uh, you're just going to get better and better. I hope so. But at a certain point, you know, the the uh, it goes the other way around. So. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If there's one element about this record that I felt was perhaps different from previous albums was definitely your vocals. This is perhaps one of your strongest album vocally. And, oh, and you. since you already touched on that subject, was it having that extra time that allow you to get a little bit lost in the weeds, if you will, in, in order to find those those extra places that you could go with your voice? Because I thought it was a phenomenal performance from start to finish. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I think it was a matter of uh, frustration, first of all. You know, sitting at home, not doing anything for so long, not being able to be on stage performing because performing is that's my happy pill you know that's what makes me happy and sitting at home not doing anything not you know talking to anyone i mean that kind of makes you suicidal after a while <laughs> uh, so coming into the studio I, I i also realized that my voice was not really in good shape because i could sing a song it would sound good but i couldn't really sing you know 12 songs in a row meaning that every Kind of my, my 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 window of recording every day i had to narrow it down to like you know an hour an hour and a half after that the quality of the voice kind of went down then we had to stop so i just went in there every morning and, and from from the first second i just went for it and i think the frustration and the energy i had built in that i couldn't really get out of the system on stage you know was directed into the microphone and also the fact that I, I, well, I couldn't work with James Michael for this album, my vocal producer, because I was not allowed into the, to the US. So instead of going to Los Angeles, I had to go to Denmark to work with Jacob Hansen. And I never worked with him before. And I think that he managed to kind of make me give this little, little extra. Maybe the, the tweak I was doing for each and every song 
in the vocal melodies, he managed to push a certain button for me to, okay, to try a little harder. I think he fooled me, to be honest with you, because he said, I think we get, no, it's not I think, we got everything we need, but give me one more. Oh, we got everything we need. I relaxed and I gave him another one. When I was relaxed, and usually the last take is what ended up on the album. Well, so he was smart, the Dane. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe working with him since you hadn't worked with him before, it maybe got you a little bit out of your comfort zone and getting you a little bit out of your comfort zone. It allowed you to discover something new about yourself. I think so. I think so. And also, kind of, you want to show him that hey, I'm 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 a good singer too. I mean, he's he's been working with with Volbeats. He's doing Amaranth. He's doing you know a lot of you know, big productions. And now I step in. They're like, hello, I can sing too. <laughs> no, it was it was a good good atmosphere, but I think everyone on the album were on top of their performance. In the way I describe things, that the album is so vivid, it's so much, it's so alive. And if you listen to the drums, I think David is fantastic because he's he's kind of on the beat. He's not behind the beat. He's kind of almost before the beat. Just you know, he he wants to to move on. And everyone else is just, you know, pushing it. Come on, come on, let's do this. Yeah, the, the sound on this album has a little bit of this, uh, almost a feel, not every song, because you guys create a lot of ebbs and flows throughout the record with the ballad here and all of this other stuff. But overall, the sound feels very big. It has a sense of being robust. But it, at the same time that it's big and robust, it's not murky. I, I didn't feel like you can hear the drums, you can hear the bass, you can hear the guitars. There's a galloping sound. Everything is very well defined individually, but then as they come together, still very well defined that you can really appreciate everything that is happening within your ears when you're listening to the album. Uh, is that something that helps the experience of, of Hammerfall and making the album perhaps even more epic? I think, you know, you should be able to hear everything that's going on on, the, on an album and every song should be possible to play live. I mean, we could probably spend six more months in the studio really tweaking things and going into micromanaging, but I think we will we'll only complicate things in the end. Um, when Fredrik Nordstrom, the, who did the mix for the album, he also co-produced, when he heard everything that we had recorded, he got a little bit, not nervous, but like shaky. Oh my God, I need to up my ante too here because you know, my, my God, this sounds fantastic. So he got a bit worried that he couldn't really make an appropriate mix to the way you know the songs were were you know performed by the uh, by all the members. I think he really managed to to make a fantastic mix, probably the best mix I heard from from Frederick, and he's he's done a lot of good stuff in the past. Do you guys spend uh, some time putting the design of the record together? Because Every time I listen to a Hammerfall album, the ballad comes at the right place. The flow is always feels perfectly natural that it takes me from the first to the last song and I don't even notice the time just going by. So is this by accident or, or do you guys actually work on it? We um, we never, even though we, we release singles, we never write singles. We write albums. So to understand... A, a, like a concept of of an album of, of a release you need to listen to the full album because there's of course a well thought out order of for all the songs same if you see hammer for live you know it takes a while for me and oscar to really you know agree on okay how should we set this up you need to please the fans you, we need to please ourselves you need to add a surprise element you need to you know it's, it's a well thought out process also for the albums because I mean you can't really start with the ballad can you I mean you need to 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 give the the true fans something really really good that they will you know be be, be, be happy hearing but also if someone is checking out Hammerfall for the first time they will not start with the last song they will listen to the first song skip to the second skip to the third so I think you should kind of really boost the first half of the album a little bit and then you maybe you 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 put the songs that are a little bit more i mean we don't really 
do any, we don't step out of the, the frame or the boundaries, you know, that far, but there are some, maybe some songs that you feel, okay, this is not the song we will play live probably, and maybe a song that is uh, second to the first trio. But to answer your question, it's, um, it's a well thought out process. It takes a while, but since we've been living with the songs for so long, you have a, a quite good picture at an early stage, you know, what songs to, to, to start with. Where should we place the, uh, the ballad? I know we had a discussion going for this one because I know Oscar wanted to have Reveries as the last song. But I said, no, you know what? This song is way too good to put as the last song because so many people, they have already changed to another album by the time the last song uh, comes. It's not like back in the day when we were listening to the vinyls. You know, you listen on the A side to the end, you flip the, the turntable, and then you listen to side B to the very end, and then you were done. So, so that song eventually ended up being like song number four or song number five now. Yeah. Because I think that song is something that people will be very surprised when they hear. And they will also, they, the, the melody will haunt people in their dreams and they will wake, wake up and they will just, na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> and go back and listen to the album. Or something else, you know, kill themselves because it's kind of one of those earworms you can't get out of your. Yeah, ears. It, 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 it has a little bit of a somberness to it, but at the same time, it's a very welcoming somberness. It's kind of hard to describe it, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's positive. It's positive. It's a very, very positive song. Yeah, it has a very interesting approach. You mentioned the hotel rooms and creating while being alone. So do you take that time to to jog down some lyrics for songs or, or do you let the album breed and tell you exactly what, what the lyrical content on a record is going to be like? I mean, every song is individual. Every, thought, every song is a standalone song. But I think there's always a, a theme on every album that is not clear for anyone else but me. For this album, I think the fact that I come to a conclusion, I, I, when I realized I'm not immortal. <laughs> it took a lot to I mean, <laughs> realize that, but oh, oh my God, I'm, eventually we all gonna die. Oh shit, so how do I handle that? Well, you know, starting to, to, to write songs about it. You have uh, Too Old to Die Young being one of them, like, okay, we're not 27, so, okay, we can't die young anymore. So, you know what? We still have so many unwritten songs inside of us. So we better stay alive as long as possible now so we can get everything out of the system and just do this as long as it's, you know, as it's possible. And also for Venerate Me, the song featuring a cameo with King Diamond. Yeah, I'm going to ask you about that after. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the lyrical concept is that uh, we die twice. The first time when you take your last breath and the second time when someone says your name for the last time. So wow. it's, it's a lot of those, those things going on on this album. I think it was me see, sitting at home alone a little bit too much, but I think it's kind of interesting concept that you don't, don't always have to sing about dragons and sword wielding warriors or hammer wielding warriors in this case but of course there's uh, uh, about Hector too no son of Odin and that's just a, a way to tell people no it's not Thor and the hammer no it's not Thor's hammer it's Hector's hammer and it's called Hammer of Dawn and, and speaking of another song Brotherhood is that a, a special track for you is that perhaps maybe the most emotionally attached song on the record, as far as you as you concern, or no? Yeah, it's a, it's a way for us to uh, to shine some light on on the most important people in the world, our fans. We just want to to pay some tribute to these these people. I mean, some of them they've been there since day one for twenty five years, supporting Hammerfall no matter what. And I mean, it might be a cliche, but we wouldn't be here without them. As simple as that. If, if they wouldn't have been there in the first place, buying the albums, coming to the show, buying the merchandise, I would probably do something else. Yeah, those fans have been there supporting Hammerfall by any means necessary. By any means necessary. And people are coming and going. And 
uh, but some stick around and they're kind of uh, raising their kids to become fans of Hammerfall. And now we have the old breed with the new breed showing up at the shows. And that's, uh, that's cool. I met some fans in, I think it was Atlanta. The, the, the father had a t-shirt. He said old breed. And the son had new breed on his. They made their own Hammerfall shirts. I think that was cool. Yeah, when I saw you guys in Toronto with Sabaton on that last tour, uh, it, it was nice to see a very eclectic age group of Hammerfall fans. You have the people who've been there from the beginning, but now they've definitely passed the hammer down to the other generations. And you see a lot of younger people in the crowd enjoying Hammerfall. It's nice to see that the band has had that kind of career that spans yeah. across multiple generations. It's fantastic. And the, the kind of the new generation of fans, they have a harder time to relate to the early stuff. If we do a couple of songs off Glory to the Brave or Legacy of Kings, you can usually see in the audience like, what's this? Ah, I never heard. Like, you never heard Dragon Lies Bleeding? No, 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 no. No, I got into listening to you guys on, on Revolution. Oh, okay. So Because, I mean, usually the album, when you discover something, will be your m most important album. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's the way it is. So it's, uh, and for us, sometimes we're, I think we're stuck in the, the, the fact that everyone is referring to Glory to the Brave as a very important album. Also, not, not only for Hammerfall, of course, but also for the genre itself. So we sometimes feel kind of forced to play songs off that album. But the, the, the reactions from the fans, is, you know, tells a different story. Yeah, and you always have to go with, with those reactions. I think they kind of give you a very nice barometer of where the band is heading. At least I get yeah. that feeling. Yeah. I mean, so, we, we touched this before that, uh, about, you know, doing the, the perfect uh, set list for a live show. But yeah, you need to, to present a couple of new songs off the new album. You need to please the fans. You need to please yourself. And you need to surprise people. There you have the perfect show. And speaking of surprises, let's talk about King Diamond on that one track. Um, when I listened to the song, I, I enjoyed the song a lot, but I almost didn't feel like you needed King Diamond on the track at all. I mean, you were freaking phenomenal on the track. So what was the idea behind having him featured on that track, but if, if, and then having him just for that small amount and not going perhaps a little bit more and almost create a duet si similar to what you did with Nora previously? Yeah. Uh, I think this was a, a matter of the label promoting this song in, a, in the wrong way, I would say. If it was up to us, we wouldn't have mentioned this at all. Only if you bought the CD or the vinyl, it will be in the credits. I, I more, We more wanted to, to create something for the fans to talk about. Like, this is not Joe of him singing. Who is it? You know, it sounds like him. No, no, it can't be. It must be him. And then eventually they will realize, oh my God, it's King Diamond. But the label, they really want to push this. And I think when they, they put it out on YouTube, it said featuring King Diamond. And we freaked out. Hey, take it, you know, take it off. Take it off the internet now. Because this is not okay. Because people will feel like they're... I, I, I mean, I saw your reaction to it and you were disappointed. You know. Yeah, because because it, 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 I felt like it was it was I, I was disappointed because I had a set of expectations coming in. I, I wasn't yes. disappointed with the song itself because the song is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and, it, and your vocals are outstanding. So it's just like yeah. when, when you put featuring him, you like you said, it creates a certain set of expectations when you come into the track, right? Yeah, I would have you know gotten disappointed in too, and I got disappointed when I saw featuring <laughs> King Diamond. But no, 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 this is not what we agreed on. But, okay, when Oscar presented the song to me, he, uh, he said, you know, I really hear, I, I, I could really hear King Diamond singing this part. And that was only the part after the solo. And I said, you know what, why don't we just ask him? Pontus, the other guitar player, he's, he's uh, King Diamond's front of house guy, live. He, he knows King, they're very close friends. And we know King. So Pontus gave him a call and, and King answered and replied, hell yeah, of course, cool, yeah. So we say, yeah, I don't, I, maybe we didn't dare to ask him to do, you know, to do a little bit more. Because when I, I, when the song was mixed and, and ready, I told Oscar, you know, 
would have been cool to use him a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but I think out of respect that when he said yes to, to do this part, we didn't, we didn't really want to, you know, push our luck on this one. <laughs> so I'm just happy that he, he decided to be a small part of Hammerfall history. And both me and Oscar being huge fans of King Diamond and Merciful Fate. I mean, for us, this was more than enough. More yeah, than enough. I, I, I totally feel your, your, your thought process here. I'm a huge fan of his and Merciful Fates as well. I mean, if, if I was ever putting a record together and, and he was willing to give me two notes, I would, I would take it gladly and I would run with it. Absolutely. And I will tell, you know, anytime he needs my help on any album, give me a call. I'm here waiting. I, I, you know, the funny thing on that track is that the you could tell slightly difference, obviously, between the two of you. But your vocals are so outstanding on that song in terms of how you push them that I was like, wow, you honestly, you you don't need it. Like you're 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 at that King Diamond level on that song throughout. Oh, so wow. I, <laughs> I honestly, I, in, in this one of the things that I really walked away from Hammer of Dawn. I mean, I love the sound, I love the guitars, I love the drums, but your vocals on this record are perhaps the best vocals you've ever laid down. And I think fans really need to uh, capture that essence that this record has, which is your voice being phenomenal throughout the entire record. Oh, thank you very much. I really, truly appreciate it. Thank you. And with that, I have one last question for you, and that is yep. after 12 records, so many journeys, so many tours, so many things that you guys have done together, What what is the strength that holds the hammer together as far as Hammerfall goes? I think there is one word that describes it all. One word that kind of, that's the, uh, the, the note or the tone that explains the whole symphony for you. Fun. We are having fun together, off stage, on stage, when we're home, you know, it's, it's, I think we've, when, we, we had a break back in 2013 and came back with Revolution in 2014. And ever since that album, it, we had like a momentum going and we had fun together. You know, going on tour, yeah. Yeah, you're going to Colombia now for a week. Yay! Yeah, you can get, get killed. Yeah, it's okay. No worries, as long as, as we have fun on the way there, because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, and we're sticking to the plan and not really you know listening to when people are you know of course there's a lot there are a lot of haters out there they've been around for a long time and eh, you know uh, why listen to hammerfall when you have bands like iron maiden blah, blah, blah. you know it doesn't matter they won go back to 1996 and we were uh about to, just before we got the the record deal people said people asked us why don't you play music that people want to hear well, because we play music that we want to play. As simple as that. And that's what we've been doing since day one. And I think if you, you know, keep, how do you say it? Eye on the prize. You, mm -hmm. you keep your eye on the prize at all times. You know, it's going to be good. Because at the end of the day, everything that happened after the release of the first album is just a big bonus. I would say. Because we didn't really expect anything. This was not a well thought out plan for world domination. Then we would not have started, you know, played heavy metal music in 1996 when the, when the grunge was like a virus. Oh, or, yeah, that was the pandemic of the, the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anybody refer to the grunge movement as the pandemic of the 90s, but I absolutely love it. I'm going to quote you on that. <laughs> you can do that. I just came up with it, so. I love it. This was, you know what, this was an absolute pleasure. I could talk to you for hours and hours, and I hope to talk to you for hours and hours the next time you come to Toronto that you guys have a North American tour. So Absolutely. best of luck with this release to you and all the guys in the band. I love all of you. You guys are amazing. Uh, and I'll see you in North America sometime soon. Absolutely. Well, keep up the good work and nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Take care. Bye.